This is March, people, and my goodness, do we have an unbelievable week setting up. Fresh off of a week last week that saw incredible things done over the weekend. Teams punching their tickets into March Madness. Dreams can come true this week, and dreams can be shattered as well. I'm Donnie Wright. Side. As we wait for Ben Stevens to get back, we're going to go right to John Rothstein, who I know has an unbelievable busy week. We don't even know if he slept. John, how's it going today? And also, how are we feeling here energy-wise? No, oh, we're juiced up, Donnie. It's one of the great weeks of the year. Championship week in college basketball. Bids will be punched. Hearts will be broken. Dreams will be made. Donnie, there's only three words to sum up what we're going to have here over the next seven days. This is March. It's fantastic stuff to watch it play out. Next Sunday will be Selection Sunday, and away we go. But let's take a look at what happened over this past weekend in the ACC. It's what we always think it's going to come down to. The final day of ACC play between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Duke Blue Devils, and it did not disappoint. A slight favorite at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Duke headed into this game as a favorite. Final score, Carolina 84-79. The full control of the ACC regular season now belongs once again to the North Carolina Tar Heels. What did you see from that game Saturday night? What were you impressed with, John? Well, reaffirmation that North Carolina didn't hit a double or a triple with its evaluations in the transfer portal. North Carolina hit a home run. Harrison Ingram, as we know, has become one of the great utility players in college basketball, has also become a better three-point shooter at power forward. But Cormac Ryan... The grad transfer from Notre Dame has fit in seamlessly. Hubert Davis retooled his team after last season when it missed the NCAA tournament and has North Carolina again up among college basketball's elite. North Carolina is still in contention very much for that fourth number one seed coming up in six days on Selection Sunday. One of those years in the ACC, John, maybe not as deep as what we anticipated in the past, but certainly two front runners here. If we look at the FanDuel Sportsbook heading into the conference tournament, it's the North Carolina Tar Heels at a plus 180 price, now drawing even with the Duke Blue Devils at a plus 180 price. We actually had Duke earlier this morning, John, as a slight favorite in this tournament. Wake Forest at a plus 750 number, along with Clemson at plus 950. Is it just so easy to look at the ACC tournament and say that final should be North Carolina or Duke? Or maybe who should we be looking at there as maybe a long shot that can punch the ticket into the tournament with the automatic bid you know i'm looking at this pit team under jeff capel as a team that's flying under the radar they're very much in the bubble picture they've won 21 games they have a star in blake hinson a player that i put on my all acc first team this year and pitt also has two very underrated guards carlton carrington and jalen Lowe, who i think have a chance to break out during the acc tournament pitt remember last year went to the ncaa tournament Won a game in the first four against Mississippi State, then beat Iowa State in the round of 64. It wouldn't shock me if Pitt has a big week in Washington, D.C. Fun times there in the ACC as we look forward to maybe one of those teams on Tobacco Road making a run and cutting down the nets in March. But in an SEC tournament play coming up this weekend, it should be fantastic. The SEC no longer a football conference. Fantastic basketball all the way through, which does include those Kentucky Wildcats over the weekend, an 85-81 to 81 win over the SEC regular season champion, Tennessee Volunteers. What are we looking forward for the Wildcats? Winners of seven of eight games. The only trip up was against LSU on the road with that double-digit lead in the second half. I'm really impressed with Kentucky is bringing down the stretch here, John. You know, Kentucky's been a different team since it lost at Rupp Arena to Gonzaga. You mentioned the run that it's on, 7-1 and one with the only loss coming at the buzzer against LSU and part of that transformation has been due to Justin Edwards. Justin Edwards was the highest touted recruit in Kentucky's fabled recruiting class at the start of the season. Did not perform well for a large portion of the season but over the last month he has emerged into a bona fide weapon for John Calipari and you know Donnie I always evaluate teams for the NCAA tournament based on what they're able to show away from their home floor. In the last month, Tennessee, Kentucky has won at Tennessee, won at Auburn, won at Mississippi State. That's very, very impressive. If we take a look at a side on each one of here in the Kentucky Wildcats, you take a look at Coach Calipari, which so many times in NCAA action, which I'm fascinated with, and of course, it usually starts with your starting five. That's where you get a bulk of the scoring. But John, take a look at the bench scoring minutes that you can get there for Kentucky. It's really impressive. Is there a strategy that Calipari is using by saying, you know what? I know I have Shepard off the bench who dropped 27 points. Dillingham has been wonderful off the bench this year with 11 points in that game. Is there a strategy moving forward that Cal's like, you know what? I don't know if they're hot hands here, but I love them coming off the bench. Well, it reminds me a little bit of what John Calipari had in the 14-15 season when Kentucky went 38-1 and that year 
when he brought Tyler Eulis and Devin Booker off the bench behind Andrew and Aaron Harrison. Kentucky obviously has an All-American in its starting lineup, and Antonio Reeves has capable scoring also from guys like DJ Wagner. But I also think that Kentucky is more than capable of using its reserves in crunch time. I posted on my own personal platform, College Hoops Today, on that on Sunday, my top six men in college basketball. One and two in the list were Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham. Taking a look there at the Tennessee Volunteers, it's one. Like, we love to watch elite players in big-time games, and you got that out of Connect. He shot 29 times from the floor, ended up with 40 points here. Moving forward, this is the blueprint for Tennessee where Connect is going to be the go-to guy here, and they're going to ride him if they expect to make a deep run in March? Well, the big difference between this Tennessee team and other Tennessee teams that Rick Barnes has coached, and keep in mind, Rick Barnes over the past six seasons has won an average of 24 games a year on Rocky Top, but the big difference in this team is having a guy like Dalton Connect who can get you a bucket down the stretch. But the facts are the facts. Tennessee has not performed very well in the NCAA tournament under Rick Barnes. You know, three years ago, that looked like a Final Four caliber team lost to Oregon State in the bubble. Two years ago, Tennessee won the SEC tournament, lost to Michigan, who was an 11 seed in the round of 32. And then last year, beat Duke in the round of 32, but then lost to Florida Atlantic in the Sweet 16. So Tennessee, again, until it proves that it can advance to the final destination before the Final Four, which is the Elite Eight, I think it's hard to trust Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. But I will say this. If Tennessee is able to get a number one seed on Selection Sunday, which is still very much in play for, it will be the first time that Tennessee is ever a number one seed in program history. And it will also be the first time that Rick Barnes has been a number one seed since 2003 at Texas with TJ Ford, which is the only time that Rick Barnes has led a team to the Final Four. See if they can do it this year. An exciting tournament heading up next week, or should I say this week here in the SEC. Let's take a look at the Big 12, my favorite conference in college basketball. Houston with an emphatic win on Saturday, 76-46 to 46 over Kansas there. You take a look at a team that comes to a high major this year. What do we expect? Tripped a little bit to start the conference basketball season, but they've been unbelievably impressive moving forward. 15-3 and three in their first season in the Big 12. An unbelievably big win over the weekend here, John, by Houston. Yeah, statement win by Houston. And, you know, Kelvin Sampson obviously had already cemented himself as a Hall of Fame caliber coach beyond the, be, before this season. But he reiterated that with the performance that he has done this year in the Big 12. You know, Houston was winning about 86% of its regular season games in its last three years in the American Athletic Conference. This year in the Big 12, the Cougars first in the conference Houston is still winning over 80% of its conference games. You can change the leagues. You can't change the Cougars' products. And I think it's only a matter of time before Kelvin Sampson is enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. See John all the time on TV here, but also doing big things here with the FanDuel Sportsbook. And the reason why we bring the FanDuel Sportsbook into this one is those lines are moving here. Looking at cutting down the nets, we'll see these numbers change from now through Selection Sunday. If we're looking at the top of the heap, numbers have improved here for the Connecticut Huskies from a 5-1 to price to plus 480. You take a look at Houston, who was a 7-1 to price over the weekend, now at a plus 650 price. And Purdue, who was a 7-1 to price here, John, slipping back to plus 750. Looking at that top line here moving forward, are we expecting Connecticut, Houston, and Purdue to easily win their conference tournaments, or could these numbers be a changing by the time we get to Selection Sunday next week? You know, I expect Connecticut and Purdue and Houston to win their respective conference tournaments because when you think about these three teams, they've all separated themselves from the rest of their leagues and also throughout the rest of college basketball. UConn, Houston, Purdue, all 28-3 and three entering their respective conference tournaments, but For a lot of these programs, you know, that are at the top, this Troika, the season doesn't begin until now. Houston needed to prove that it could handle itself in the Big 12. It's done that. It won a Big 12 regular season title. But if you're Kelvin Sampson and you have gotten this program to a Final Four, to an Elite Eight, you want to go back to college basketball's most hallowed showcase and have a chance to win a national championship. If you're UConn and Dan Hurley, You want to win a Big East tournament title this week. You didn't do that last year when you won a national championship. And you obviously want to go back-to-back and be the first program to win back-to-back national titles since Billy Donovan did it at Florida in 06 and 07. 
And obviously, if you're Purdue, there is only one way to fully exercise the demon from last year against FDU, and that's getting to the Final Four in Phoenix and taking Purdue to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. I certainly believe they can get there playing great basketball. Sometimes I want to take out those demons over the past two years and say, what have they done for me lately? Well, Purdue has been very good down the stretch. We'll see what they do in the Big Ten tournament. But let's focus all eyes on Madison Square Garden, one of the biggest shows each and every year. It's the Big East Conference Tournament. It's this week, and we're ready to go. The favorites here would be Connecticut at a minus 150 price, and rightfully so, followed by Creighton, Marquette, and St. John's, one of the more intriguing teams here, John, as we've noticed. Creighton goes into Philadelphia and wins at the buzzer where Villanova's down as many as 24 points in this game. Villanova has to win a few basketball games being on the edge. Let's start there. What's the prognosis for the Wildcats up in the garden this week? You know, if Villanova won two games this week at the Big East tournament, I think it would give itself a chance to get in that large bit to the NCAA tournament. But Donnie, what happens is when you have opportunities to cement yourself as an NCAA tournament team, and you don't capitalize on them, all of a sudden you give the rest of the field an opportunity to play catch-up, and you put the decision back in the committee's hands. Villanova can put itself back in play with two wins, but to cement itself as an NCAA tournament team for good has to win three games at Madison Square Garden. Let's move up the ladder here. And by the way, I believe you are the host of College Hoops Today, which is the only podcast that does get played live 52 weeks per year. You've had Shaka Smart on to talk about it, so you're the guy to talk to here. Marquette is a 6-1 to price here in the Garden to win the Big East tournament. Tyler Kolek, he's going to be the key. I saw him yesterday, or over the weekend, I should say, shooting around here, getting ready. Will he be playing, or do you think, in the Big East tournament? And what's his prognosis moving forward? It's still to be determined. You know, I talked to Shaka Smart on Sunday. He told me there was no news really to update on Tyler Kolick. He's still progressing and that Marquette's going to announce here in the middle of the week whether or not he can play in the Big East tournament. But if you're Marquette and you've already won a Big East tournament with Tyler Kolick, which you did a year ago, and the ultimate goal is the NCAA tournament, I would not be surprised if the Golden Eagles pull Tyler Kolick out of the lineup this week in New York. But again, we're waiting on official word from Marquette on that matter. So if we take a look at the top two teams here in the Big East heading into this tournament, it's Connecticut, as we said, at a minus 150 price, then Creighton at plus 350 with that big win over Villanova in Philadelphia. Is it going to be these two teams that we're probably looking at in the final if Marquette comes in a little bit shorthanded? I think so. I'm expecting a UConn-Creighton championship game in the Big East tournament on Saturday night on 33rd Street in between 7th and 8th. But I also think we could get an incredible, incredible atmosphere coming up on Friday night if St. John's were to beat St. Paul and then match up with UConn in the Big East tournament semifinals. The Red Storm have not been in the semifinals of the Big East tournament since 2000, which is the last time this program won an NCAA tournament game. That would mean that it would be Rick Pitino against Dan Hurley Friday night at the world's most famous arena.